moves around so much that he really didn't get set, but he was usually moving so fast. Watch me train, you watch me dance, and it looks better than I did 10 years ago. Hi, this is Spoonie. We're in the corner for Streetwise Management, and I'm sitting here now with uh, Streetwise Management head honcho, uh, <laughs> Michael Amabidiaco. Um, tell us a little bit more about Streetwise Management uh, and what it's trying to do. Well, it's um, per se, it's basically started off from just being a boxing management, because that's why I'm a boxing manager. But I decided to go the whole hog in a sense that rather than just being a boxing manager, try to create something that is more than just boxing management, like a family. So what we do, and also with young boxers that we have coming through, we like them to understand that it's not just boxing they're doing. They're actually kind of learning how to be a man, you know? So we try to life teach them skills. life skills, all those aspects of being, in, first of all, in adulthood, then learning their boxing trade, then going on from there. So it's not just boxing, it'll be after boxing as well. I mean, this German, don't forget, he's, 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 British, he's British champion. Really? Yeah. And loose it out! For sure. You know? Now tell, tell us a little bit about the fighters that you've got on the stable. Well, we've... Michael Norgrove is our professional that we have here. He's... Um, I wouldn't say a young man, he came into the game pretty late, but his determination and his fitness, I mean, he ran the marathon in just three hours. When he came into the gym, we, we took him from Repton Amateur Club and he had a good record there, being in the under 10s national final and again, being in the London final the following year. He came to us because of his age, he wanted to turn professional, so we had a look at him. And we had a look at him in everything he'd done. He's a fantastic young gentleman. And to be quite honest, it surprised us that he was actually a boxer because he came across kind of like this middle class guy working in a bank, you know, and goes to work in a suit and so like, what do you, what do you want to get in the gym for and get beat about for? You've got a great job. He's actually a good golfer as well, like you are yourself. He's a hips, 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 sit, 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 sit. Sherry's been training him up in the first <laughs> Michael's, um, I mean, he didn't have many fights in amateur, but really, really well in amateur style. You know, uh, Cherry's been a great deal, great deal. Now, so we're hoping now it's time now for Michael to show what Cherry's talking about in the last, you know, last year. Go on from there, you know. Let's stand up. And it's been fantastic, our relationship. So it's not too difficult getting in fights. Obviously, at this end of the scale, it's hard for boxers to get paid. There's not a lot of money in boxing at the minute. So it's hard for boxers to get paid. So what's happening now is a lot of boxers are having to sell tickets to get onto shows and having to sell enough tickets to earn money to, pay, to get paid. So that's the way it's going. But with what we do here, we, we rather see the experience of actually getting a fight. Because a, a lot of fighters now are being wrapped up in like they want to sign for the big promoters, the Maloney's, the Warrens, the this, the that. But they're not getting no fights. A year's going by and they're getting one fight. But I can take my fight to a Steve Goodwin and get him six fights in a year. So it's the experience they're getting. So that's, that's, that's where we are at the minute. And recouping. I heard it's not all about, it's not all work for you guys. Um, recently, living the boxing fan's dream, <laughs> being on South Beach in Miami, hanging out with none other than Angelo Dundee. What was that like as an experience? That was, um, that was absolutely humbling but amazing experience at the same time. I mean, Angelo Dundee is probably recognised as the most famous trainer in the world. Is that because he worked with the most famous boxer? Is he, is yeah, he because he wor worked with the most famous, but along with other boxers as well, such as Sugar Ray Leonard. You know, but he worked in a time where boxing spoke volumes. People, today there's other sports that come into it, other sports that have maybe take the headlines away, but at that time, and with Muhammad Ali, so to speak, boxing was the foremost of sports. It had the biggest voice, and there beside the biggest voice was Angelo Dundee. 
And we managed to go to the Fifth Street gym, which Andrew Jundi and his brother's gym, which they used to train in, in Miami. Because that was the original Fifth Street that gym. That was the original. Armadale, yeah. That then sort of, it closed down, it moved, and then they were on 8th Street on Washington. So, yeah, actually, yeah. And then now, they now they've back come back. It's, it's just, it's kind of now just round the corner, but it's the kind of, yeah, it's the, same, it's the building. same building. So there's a lot of history steeped in, in, in that gym. And to, to, when we went over there, we, we managed to speak, have a few words with Angelo Dundee. Let me tell you guys, you better get in good shape because you guys are going to make history. I always felt that England would come up with some great fighters. And I look forward to seeing you guys, and I'll be rooting for you. What struck me about the man is his vigour, his life. I mean, an 89-year-old man was standing... 90 years old, nearly. 90 years, 89 years old, was standing there all day talking to everybody. He'd never set eyes on me. He gave me the time of day. He gave me every single piece of time that I wanted with him. It might have been the suit. <laughs> I'm sure it was, it was him himself. Muhammad Ali paid a visit to the gym as well at the time, and it brought goose pimples to me because to be in the same room as probably arguably the greatest sportsman that ever lived, was just like, wow, you know? Starting streetwise two and a half years ago to being in the room with Angelo Dundee and Muhammad Ali was like, hey, if we can do this, what, what more can we do? What more can we achieve?